cardiovascular lesions in the cephalus okay so before starting the disease of pericardium and myocardium let's just uh, recall the uh, structure of the pericardium and myocardium as we all know that heart is mainly made up of three layers one is the endocardium myocardium and pericardium okay so pericardium is basically uh, made up of the fibrous tissue this is the pericardium and uh, this is also lined by the this is also lined by the mesothelial cells okay and then visceral pericardium there are two layers of the pericardium one is a parietal pericardium and another is a visceral pericardium okay so peri parietal pericardium is made up of the fibrous tissue and also lined by the mesothelial cells and uh, visceral pericardium is a part of heart itself and the, it is almost 1 mm thick and it is again lined by the Uh, mesothelial cells between the visceral pericardium and the parietal pericardium there is a space called as pericardial space okay and then this is the myocardium which is made up of myocytes or cardiac muscles and the endocardium which is made up of the endothelial cells okay so these are the layers of heart endocardium myocardium and pericardium okay so coming to the disease of pericardium or the pericarditis okay so uh, pericarditis can occur whenever there is inflammation of the pericardium it can uh, occur due to the cause of the heart itself or the cardiac causes it can be due to the heart of the uh, disease of the thorax like uh, adjacent structures mediastinal structures lung etc so thoracic causes can be there or pericarditis can be a part of the systemic disorders okay it can be cause of any any type of the immune mediated disease of the uh, body or any kind of systemic illness okay or sometimes there are the metastases of different tumors into the pericardial space this can also lead to pericarditis okay so metastases can also be a cause of the pericarditis then during the various cardiac surgeries or cardiotomies there can be infection of the pericardium or collection of fluid in the pericardium which can lead to pericarditis okay so the uh, uh, cause of pericarditis can not only be in the heart itself it can be generalized okay uh, uh, the cause can be in the heart in the thorax or the chest it can be a part of the systemic diseases or even the metastasis of following any surgical procedures so these were the cause of pericarditis okay now coming to uh, Uh, how how do we categorize these causes one can be infectious causes certain viruses bacteria tuberculosis fungal and certain parasites it can also be uh, mediated by the immunological diseases like rheumatic fever sle scleroderma or post surgical procedures or sometimes pericarditis can also be developed following the dessler syndrome or the uh, the dessler syndrome is a type of uh, immunological mediated phenomena which can occur post myocardial infarction days to weeks after mi the patient develops some immunological mediated reaction this is called as dessler syndrome so dessler syndrome can also involve pericardium okay sometimes there are certain cardiotoxic drugs they can also lead to pericarditis then other causes can be myocardial infarction uremia surgery metastasis trauma and certain radiation post radiation fibrosis and pericarditis can also okay so these are the common causes of pericarditis this is clear so shall we move forward till now we have discussed the causes of pericarditis and we have classified the diseases of pericarditis look i am going very slow so please mention in the question of the chat box that things are clear okay so now coming to the symptoms or the clinical signs of pericarditis clinical features or clinical signs and symptoms of pericarditis chest pain is the most common symptom of pericarditis and this chest pain is usually retrosternal means behind it appears the as the pain is coming behind the sternum okay it is retrosternal pain and it is very sharp and constant and this pain is uh, mediated is shifted or it is uh, relieved when the patient is uh, when the patient is slightly uh, bends forward and it uh, worsens when the patient uh, uh, li lies down okay and it also radiates so the 
pain changes with the posture of the patient okay so chest pain since uh, uh, it can uh, be secondary to certain infections so the patient can have malaise even fever tachypnea tachycardia can also develop another very important feature of the pericarditis is pericardial friction rub which is which can be heard by stethoscopes okay so there is uh, with every heartbeat or every uh, every uh, heartbeat there is friction kind of uh, murmur not exactly the murmur a sound appears which is called as pericardial friction rub this occurs because of the rubbing of distal and pericardial uh, pericardium with each other this is called as pericardial friction rub and uh, uh, sometimes following pericarditis there is some degree of pericardial effusion also okay and when this uh, pericardial effusion is uh, very much it can lead to cardiac tamponade okay so these are the common signs and symptoms of pericarditis okay clear uh, now coming to classification of pericarditis how do we classify pericarditis there are two broad categories one is the acute pericarditis and other is the chronic or the healed pericarditis as the name suggests acute means the sign it is of smaller duration okay acute can be uh, again divided into serous pericarditis fibrinous or serous fibrinous pericarditis then third one is the purulent or the separative pericarditis then fourth one is hemorrhagic pericarditis and uh, fifth one is caseous pericarditis and chronic pericarditis we have adhesive mediastinal pericarditis and constrictive pericarditis so first of all coming to the serous pericarditis this uh, this is very important to know that serous pericarditis is caused by the non infectious inflammatory diseases so this is very important like purulent pericarditis and serous fibrinous pericarditis they are usually caused by the infectious diseases but serous pericarditis is caused by the non which are inflammatory in nature but they are not not caused by any pathogens okay like rheumatic fever sle scleroderma tumors metastatic disease can also lead to serous pericarditis and uremia okay and here the fluid is uh, if you see uh, here the there is hardly any fibrin okay there is just collection of fluid between the two layers of the pericardium but there is no fibrin and the fluid is pale yellow in nature okay and here the inflammation is okay and surrounding pericardium may show predominantly lymphocytes and if it's secondary to certain metastatic diseases then we can see also some neoplastic cells within the pericardium or the pericardial space just the tumor ka metastasis hoga that tumor cells will be present in the pericardial space or in the pericardium okay along with mild degree of inflammation and minimal collection okay and this fluid is pale yellow in nature called as serous fluid okay this is the gross appearance of the serous pericarditis clear okay now moving to the second variety that is fibrinous or serous fibrinous pericarditis here apart from the serous fluid there is admixture of fibrin also that is why it is called as serous fibrinous pericarditis it can be due to acute myocardial infarction or the dessler syndrome that is post mi uh, immunological disorder it can be secondary to uremia chest radiation and rheumatic fever sle and certain kind of trauma or certain cardiac procedure okay so here uh, apart from uh, apart from uh, serous fluid there are fibrin threads or fibrosis within the pericardial space and this can lead to fusion of the uh, here you can see grossly you can see tiny fibers some thick fibers are also there between the visceral and the parietal pericardium along with the fluid okay and this typical appearance is called as bread and butter appearance okay this is the gross findings of the fibrinous or serous fibrinous pericarditis and this appearance is called as bread and butter appearance and this appear uh, this appearance is due to presence of fluid serous fluid along with tiny fibrin fibers or tiny fibers okay this uh, appearance is called as bread and butter pericarditis okay now coming to microscopy in microscopy we can see uh, these are layers of pericardium here we can see 
there can be uh, edema of the pericardium along with mild inflammatory infiltrate fibrosis and this is the exudate lying the pericardium okay so these are microscopic finding and this is the pericardial fat okay so edema mild inflammation usually consists of the lymphocytes and with some degree of fibrin exudates in the fibrino serofibrinous pericarditis or fibrino serous pericarditis okay so again the symptoms are pain as we have discussed earlier sharp pleuritic uh, pain and which is position dependent sometimes fever can also be present and it may lead to congestive heart failure and again uh, here we can also uh, listen the pericardial friction rub okay Then now coming to the third type of pericarditis, which is purulent or suppurative pericarditis, it can be due to active infection. When the when there is invasion of the microbial microbiomes or the microbial uh, agents into the pericardial space, okay. And this exudate here is not pale. It can be it can range from thin, cloudy to frank pus like uh, exudate. Okay, it can occur due to the direct extension. Uh, for direct extension from surrounding structures, like if there is impairment of the pleural cavity, the infection can spread to the pericardial space, leading to the purulent pericarditis. Or infection can spread directly from the lung, like in cases of low bone pneumonia. Or if there is certain medial infection or some collection of pus within the medial sternum, and it directly invades the pericardium, it will lead to purulent or suppurative pericarditis. Similarly, ring abscess through the myocardium or the aortic root, ring abscess. they can also infect the pericardium okay sometimes during the surgical procedures of cardiotomy infection can happen in the pericardial pericardial space and this will lead to purulent pericarditis and sometimes infection can spread from the lymphatics okay so uh, due to the direct uh, ya to direct route se ho ya fir through the lymphatics and blood okay there should be active infection of the pericardium then only it will lead to purulent or suppurative pericarditis okay now coming to the gross findings in uh, suppurative pericarditis here we can see collection of fluid which can range from 400 to 500 ml in volume and this can be thin cloudy to the frank pus like appearance and uh, because it is purulent or, uh, or just uh, suppurative pericarditis the infection is is maximum infection so we can agar hum culture karte it will be positive for the organism and also we can see lots of acute inflammatory cells like polymorphs us pe jaise ki lymphocytes aa rahe the yahan pe we will have lots of polymorphs and thick exudate will be there theek hai saath mein when this kind of pericarditis it can, this infection can also spread to the surrounding structures leading to mediastinal pericarditis it can also involve the other structures of the mediastinum and whenever the infection resolves this will lead to constructive pericarditis okay means the heart is enclosed in a thick fibrous bag and the heart is not able to relax during the uh, diastole and not able to contract properly during the systole so this is called as constructive pericarditis so one of the complication of the purulent pericarditis is development of constructive pericarditis okay and which is a serious consequence of the suppurative or purulent pericarditis okay now coming to the third, fourth variety where that is hemorrhagic pericarditis here apart from the fibrin and suppurative infection we have significant amount of blood okay so the exudate the collection of the fluid is mainly hemorrhagic then it is called as hemorrhagic pericarditis it can again be due to some metastasis of the neoplasm bacterial infection and ek extra cheez ye hai ki sometimes if the patient is having some kind of bleeding diathesis uska apt apt to derange hai then then also he can develop hemorrhagic pericarditis similarly following surgery tuberculosis if there is significant amount of blood grossly then it is called as hemorrhagic pericarditis and signs and symptoms are similar to fibrinous and suppurative pericarditis okay but the gross of the collect fluid which is collected in the space is mainly the hemorrhagic fluid that is why it is called as hemorrhagic 
pericarditis. Okay. Now, cases pericarditis usually, as the name suggests, cases lesions are secondary to tuberculosis. So, whenever there is involvement of the pericardium following the tuberculosis or during the course of tuberculosis, it is called as cases pericarditis. Very infrequently, cases pericarditis can also develop following certain fungal infection, but it is very uncommon. Okay. Uh, infection jota hai kahan se sakta? It can spread from the tracheobronchial lymph nodes or directly from the lung abscess. Okay. So. Here we can see microscopy, we can see lots of granulomas and cases necrosis in the pericardium. Okay, so tuberculosis can also be a cause of pericarditis. Okay, not very commonly seen, but it can also lead to pericarditis or it can, pericarditis can also be one of the complications of tuberculosis. Okay, so the second variety that was the chronic or the healed pericarditis. Okay, usually the chronic pericarditis follows some type of separative pericarditis or fibrinous pericarditis, it is usually a consequence of acute pericarditis. Isme kya hota, what happens here? Here we can see the thickening is very flat or the plaque-like thickening. Okay, And this plaque-like pla plaque -like thickening usually does not impair the cardiac function because and it does not obliterate the pericardial space. So cardiac functions are not very much impaired if the thickening is flat or the plaque-like thickening. But when the thickening or the fibrosis is very dense and stringy, then it can obliterate the pericardial space. And when it obliterates the pericardial space, then the cardiac functions are impaired. Okay, So thickening can be very small or very less or flat, or it can be very dense, depending on the severity of the disease. Okay, So uh, it can have two kinds of presentation. And sometimes this... Uh, Chronic pericarditis can present as adhesive medial stenopericarditis. Means the fibrosis not only will involve the pericardial space, but also it involves the surrounding structures. So whenever there is diastole, the entire structures are pushed here and there with each systole and diastole. So this leads to impaired cardiac function. So it can not only involve the Heart, it can also involve the other structures of the mediastinum. This, this uh, the term here used is adhesive mediastinopericarditis. So these are the different presentations of chronic pericarditis or the healed pericarditis because it is a consequence of acute pericarditis. Okay. Now coming to constructive pericarditis. Constructive pericarditis is one of the complications of pericarditis. Okay, what happens here? Here the heart is encased in a dense fibrous or fibrocalcific scar. And because of because uh, because this leads to impaired functions in the heart. This leads to diastolic expansion. The heart is not able to relax during the diastole and also not able to pump during the systole. So here the functions of heart are impaired and usually these uh, this type of uh, pericarditis usually mimics the restrictive cardiomyopathies. So we'll discuss restrictive cardiomyopathies in the future slides. So uh, this is constructive pericarditis is one of the complications of pericarditis. Okay, here the signs can be distant muffled heart sounds, elevated jugular venous pressure, peripheral edema, and treatment is the pericardiectomy. We have to release the uh, fibrous bands to relieve the symptoms of peri constructive pericarditis. Okay, cardiotomy is the pericardiotomy is the treatment of choice. Okay, so now till now we have discussed the disease of pericardium. Is it clear? Shall we move forward? Hi. Okay. Good. So uh, after the disease of pericardium, now we'll start the disease of cardi. Now we'll start cardiomyopathies. Okay. So what are cardiomyopathies? Cardiomyopathies are a group of heterogeneous group of diseases in which there are two defects: either mechanical dysfunction or electrical dysfunctions of the myocardium. Okay. So myo cardiomyopathies are the diseases of myocardium or the cardiac muscles. And this dysfunction can be mechanical dysfunction or the electrical dysfunction. 
and due to the mechanical or the electrical dysfunction of myocardium there can be inappropriate ventricular hypertrophy or ventricular dilatation dono ho sakte hain this dysfunction can lead to the hypertrophy of the ventricles both ventricles or the left ventricle or it can also lead to the dilatation of ventricles as well as the atrium theek hai so all the cardiomyopathies ultimately lead to chf or the cardiovascular death and progressive heart failure theek hai so cause of the cardiomyopathies it can be primary cardiomyopathy or the secondary cardiomyopathy primary cardiomyopathy when there is primarily or the involvement of heart only okay no other organ is involved only the heart is involved and the cause of primary cardiomyopathies can be genetic there can be certain defect genetic defects in certain proteins which are involved in the myocardial function or there can be certain acquired diseases where which can toxins or certain drugs which can damage or which can be toxic to the myocardium okay so or the other causes secondary cardiomyopathies here the myocardial involvement is usually a part of the systemic disease or the multi organ disorder okay secondary when the heart is involved other with, along with other organs and primary when heart is the only site of involvement okay so that's how we classify the cardiomyopathies now we'll skip this slide now coming to the classification of cardiomyopathies cardiomyopathies are basically of three types one is the dilated cardiomyopathy which is most common second is the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and third is the restrictive cardiomyopathy okay so another fourth variety is arrhythmic right ventricular cardiomyopathy which is again uh, due to certain genetic disease and here there is involvement only of the right ventricle okay so basically three types one is dilated cardiomyopathies second is hypertrophic cardiomyopathies third is restrictive cardiomyopathy which is least common and out of these three dilated cardiomyopathies are most common and the fourth variety is arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy okay now causes we'll discuss later on causes can be due infections certain toxins which are directly toxic to myocardium certain metabolic disorders then neuromuscular disorders certain storage diseases because of the deposition of certain substances metabolic substances it can damage the myocardium which will lead to cardiomyopathies certain tumors metastatic tumors jaise ki humne padha tha bhi pericardium mein whenever there is metastasis of the tumors within the pericardium it will lead to pericarditis whenever there is metastasis of certain tumors leukemia sarcomas within the myocardium it will lead to cardiomyopathies and certain immunological disorders can also lead to cardiomyopathies whenever there is involvement of the myocardium it is called as cardiomyopathy okay so uh, uh, this is the how we compare these types of these three important types of cardiomyopathies this is a normal heart this is left ventricle left atrium and aorta okay so normally what happens in dilated cardiomyopathies as the name suggests it is dilated cardiomyopathy so here the heart is very much enlarged as compared to this this is the normal heart and here we can see the heart is enlarged there is involvement of the left ventricle right ventricle atrium sab kuch enlarge hota and the heart is flabby and hypertrophic also wall ki bhi hypertrophy ho jati hai and the defect here is systolic dysfunction means what happens the heart is not able to contract properly during systole so this is very important to remember that dilated cardiomyopathies result as a dysfunction as a result of systolic dysfunction okay on the other hand the hypertrophic cardiomyopathies occur as a defect in the diastole not in the systole means the heart is not able to relax properly during diastole so what happens here the, the cardiac muscles they yahan pe kya hota what happens here is in general heart rate enlargement nahi hota hai yahan pe kya hota what happens here is there is usually hypertrophy or enlargement only of the left ventricle usually left ventricle ka involvement hota hai left ventricular hypertrophy hoti and ultimately left ventricular failure hota the heart is enlarged but it is asymmetrically enlarged isme usually left ventricle ka thickening hoti and the intraventricular septa is thickened 
okay and it occurs as a result of diastolic dysfunction not the systolic dysfunction okay and third variety is which is least common is the restrictive cardiomyopathy and it is due to the um, uh, ventricular uh, ventricle compliance are not good okay the ventricle is not able to relax properly during the diastole okay and yahan pe kya hota hai ki usually there is enlargement of the atrium by atrium means right atria and left atria they are enlarged heart ka size utna enlarged nahi hota in restrictive cardiomyopathy so this is how we grossly differentiate between these three types of cardiomyopathies and what is the type of dysfunction okay so now coming to first uh, entity that is dilated cardiomyopathy dilated cardiomyopathy or dcm is characterized morphologically and functionally by progressive cardiac dilatation and here the dysfunction is the systolic dysfunction and this systolic dysfunction leads to hypertrophy of the heart and enlargement of the heart okay characterized by pathophysiology characterized by diffuse inflammation and rapid degeneration of the myocardial fibers this leads to ventricular dilatation and impaired in the systolic function and gradually there is enlargement of the heart and stasis of the blood because why stasis of the blood because the heart is not able to contract properly during the systole so there is the blood gets stagnated within the heart so what happens the heart is enlarged flabby and the walls are thickened hypertrophy ho jati hai saath mein they can be because of the stasis of the blood there can be certain neural thrombi or the thrombi within the cavity of the heart okay ventricles atriums pe thrombi ban jate hain and this leads to cardiomegaly okay so etiology can be now this is very important it can be genetic genetic certain proteins whenever there is some mutations in the proteins genes that encode for the protein of the cytoskeleton sarcolemma and the nuclear envelope protein in me se kisi bhi protein mein defect hota hai so then what happens the heart is not able to relax properly during the systole okay certain myocardial myocardial diseases alcohol certain toxins certain toxic drugs cardiotoxic drugs like adriamycin tyrosine kinase inhibitors cobalts these are toxic to the myocardium so alcohol is again directly it causes uh, direct toxicity to the myocardium along with certain drugs okay this will lead to cardiomyopathies and similarly peripartum cardiomyopathy or following child birth cardiomyopathies can also develop dilated cardiomyopathy can develop because sometimes pregnancy is associated with hypertension volume overload certain metabolic derangement or certain immunological reactions can happen following child birth so child birth can also uh, lead to dilated cardio to myopathies similarly iron overload whenever there is iron overload in the body this will be toxic to the myocardium so hemochromatosis or multiple blood transfusions like in patients of thalassemia cardiomyopathy secondary cardiomyopathies can develop similarly okay similarly in the certain conditions whenever there is supraphysical stress like catecholamine effects this will lead to taku shubo cardiomyopathy which we'll discuss later on so genetic myocarditis certain toxins drugs child birth iron overload and catecholamine effects or whenever this increase catecholamine within the blood this can also lead to a special type of cardiomyopathy called as taku shubo cardiomyopathy although this is not very common type of cardiomyopathy okay now coming to again this we have discussed this is a normal heart and here there is dilated cardiomyopathy and uh, now coming to the gross findings this is very important here we, we we have discussed the heart is enlarged and heavy and flabby because it is not able to uh, contract properly during the systole systolic dysfunction hota hai isliye heart is flabby and because of the stasis of blood the heart is dilated their chambers are dilated the walls are thick and it is flabby not contracting properly during the systole so what happens there is stasis of blood within the heart and this stasis of blood lead to certain thrombi these thrombi are called as neural thrombi and the patient is at risk of thromboembolism okay and usually it is seen that there is no valvular abnormalities okay valvular abnormalities are usually not seen in the cardiomyopathies because it is a disease of myocardium only okay so valvular alterations are usually not present 
माइक्रोस्कोपी में क्या होगा वी सी माइक्रोस्कोप फीचर्स आर नॉट वेरी स्पेसिफिक वी कैन सी ओनली द हाइपरट्रॉफी दिस रेड थिंग इज माइसाइट वे कैन वी कैन सी हाइपरट्रॉफी द माइसाइट साइज इज इंक्रीज एंड वे कैन बी इंटेस्टिशियल फाइब्रोसिस दिस ब्लू थिंग इज फाइब्रोसिस फाइब्रोसिस ओके सो इंक्रीज इन द साइज ऑफ द माइसाइट और द माइसाइट हाइपरट्रॉफी अलॉन्ग विथ इंटेस्टिशियल फाइब्रोसिस एंड ओनली माइल्ड क्रॉनिक इंफॉर्मेशन ओके so this is the microscopic findings of dilated cardiomyopathy and these are non specific findings okay now a uh, special type of um, cardiomyopathy that is erythromelalgic right ventricular my uh, cardiomyopathy and this occurs as an autosomal dominance inherit inheritance of the uh, cardiac muscles and what happens here is as the name suggests it is only the right ventricular failure there can be rhythmic disturbances ventricular tachycardia or fibrillation can happen microscope gross mein hum dekhte hain what happens in the erythromelalgic right ventricular cardiomyopathy the left vent this is the left vent this is a transverse section of the heart grossly here we can see this is left ventricle and this is right ventricle so disease kahan par hai only in the right ventricle okay and it is a genetic defect of the right ventricle okay so left ventricle is virtually normal नॉर्मल थिकनेस है ठीक है चेंबर्स भी है कैविटी भी है और राइट पेंटिकल में क्या हो रहा है वी कैन सी द इंटायर वॉल इज रिप्लेस्ड बाय द फाइबर्स टिश्यू हार्डली एनी वी कैन सी हार्डली एनी माओसाइट ओके माओकार्डियम बिल्कुल नहीं है इट इज रिप्लेस बाय दिस थिन फाइबर सेप्टा एंड देयर इज इंक्रीज फैट इन्फ्यूटेशन दिस इज येलो थिंग इज फैट पेरिकार्डियल फैट तो यहाँ पे बहुत सारा पेरिकार्डियल फैट हो जाएगा अलोंग विद दिस थिन फाइबर सेप्टा एंड देर इज लॉस ऑफ माओकार्डियम ओके एंड ऑब्वियसली इज वेरी मच इन लार्ज बॉल इज थिक एंड बॉल इज रिप्लेस बाय द फाइबर सेप्टा एंड दिस फैट ओके अगेन दिस इज द माइक्रोस्कोपिक फाइंडिंग ये जो ब्रेड है दिस इज माओकार्डियम ओके यहाँ पे क्या है हार्डली इन माओकार्डियम इट इज रिप्लेस दिस माओकार्डियम इज रिप्लेस बाय दिस ब्लूस टिश्यू विच इज fibrosis fibrous septa and this is fat lots of fat infiltration so this was the microscopic findings of erythromelalgic right ventricular cardiomyopathy okay this is clear shall we move forward please mention in the chat box or the question box okay so now coming to the next entity so we have discussed two types of cardiomyopathies one was the dilatory cardiomyopathy and other was arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy okay so third variety is the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy so what happens here is here there is first of all the defect here is the diastolic dysfunction it is it occurs as a result of diastolic dysfunction means the heart is not able to relax during the diastole okay then it is usually associated with myocardial hypertrophy and intermittent obstruction in the ventricular outflow okay so what what is the cause of this hypertrophic cardiomyopathy it is very important to remember here that is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is caused by the mutations in the proteins of sarcomere only okay jabki dilatory cardiomyopathy mein kya ho raha tha defects in the sarcomere protein defects in the cytoskeletal proteins and defects in the nuclear protein kahin pe bhi defect hoga it will lead to dilated cardiomyopathy lekin hypertrophic cardiomyopathy mein there is mutations only in the sarcomere proteins okay so kon kon sarcomere proteins ho sakte hain it can be beta mhc or beta myosin heavy chain cardiac troponins alpha tropomyosin myosin binding proteins all these are the proteins that in genes that encode for the sarcomere proteins okay ab dekho naam se kya lag raha hai it is a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy so hypertrophic means the heart is thick walled heavy and it is bahut zyada contract kar raha it is not able to relax during the diastole and this to yahan pe main problem kya hai hypertrophy aur yahan pe pure heart ka enlargement nahi hoga heart flabby nahi hoga yahan par opposite hoga heart will be heavy 
thickened hoga but it will be hyper contracting it is not able to relax during the diastole and there is asymmetrical hypertrophy of the heart jabki diastole di- dilated cardiomyopathy mein kya hoga in general the heart is enlarged ball are thickened and it is flabby yahan pe opposite it is asymmetrical enlargement of the heart mainly left ventricular or interventricular septa enlarged hoga and it is hyper contract thicken interventricular septum and interventricular wall because of the mutations in the proteins that sarcomeric proteins and the heart is hyper contracting and thickened usually hyper heart ki jo ventricle hoga hypertrophied hoga or hyper contracting ventricles hoga theek hai and this leads to diastole dysfunction impaired ventricular filling as well as this way important there is obstruction in the outflow of the ventricle and this leads to decrease in the cardiac output okay causes can be humne pehle dekh liya ki in sare genes mein defect hoga sarcomere proteins ke gene mein defect genes sarcomere proteins the genes that code for the sarcomere proteins there will be mutation in those genes now coming to gross dilated cardiomyopathy mein kya tha please mention in the question box what of the gross findings of heart in dilated cardiomyopathy Yes, mention please mention in the question box. What are the gross findings in dilated cardiomyopathy? Very good. Enlarged, flabby heart, flabby heart, enlarged heart. Good. So what happens here in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? There is myocardial hypertrophy, and usually dilatation is not a feature of ventricular. Uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and there there will be asymmetrical septal hypertrophy okay so this is uh, this leads to banana shape heart there is asymmetrical enlargement of mainly of the left ventricle and the interventricular septa septa be upper part of the septa is much more involved as compared to the lower part of the septa okay and the ventricular cavity is elongated this is the left ventricular cavity it is elongated okay और माइक्रोस्कोपी में क्या होगा माइक्रोस्कोपी में वी सी हाइपरट्रॉफी ऑफ द माइसाइट्स एंड एक्सग्रेटेड ब्रांचिंग एंड इंटेस्टिशियल ये दीज आर द माइसाइट्स इनकी हाइपरट्रॉफी होगी उनकी ब्रांचिंग ज्यादा होगी एज कंपेयर टू द नॉर्मल माइसाइट एंड इन बिटवीन द माइसाइट देर कैन बी फाइब्रोसिस एंड माइल्ड क्रॉनिक इन्फ्लेमेशन अगेन दीज फीचर आर नॉट वेरी स्पेसिफिक नाउ दिस हाइपरट्रॉफिक कार्डियोमायोपैथी may or may not be associated with outflow obstruction theek hai isme do cheeze thi ek to asymmetrical enlargement of heart tha asymmetrical enlargement of uh, sept, interventricular septa tha sath mein there can be ventricular outflow obstruction ye septa itna zyada enlarge hua tha part of the septa that this mitral wall this comes in contact with the septa so with each with each uh, Systole, there is movement of the this is the mitral valve. ये mitral valve आगे क्यों move करता है? ठीक है? This is called as systolic anterior motion of the mitral valve. ठीक है? And this leads to ventricular regurgitation and outflow obstruction. And sometimes this may not be associated with outflow obstruction. Okay? So it can also present with outflow obstruction. Now uh, we are comparing hypertrophic cardiomyopathy with the डायलेटेड कार्डियोमायोपैथी सो बेसिक डिफरेंस क्या होता है जो मैंने अभी डिस्कस किया यहाँ पे म्यूटेशन हंड्रेड परसेंट जेनेटिक कॉजेज होता है एंड म्यूटेशन इन द सार्कोमेयर प्रोटीन ओनली ठीक है यहाँ पे जेनेटिक कॉजेज में हो सकती है नॉन जेनेटिक कॉजेज जेनेटिक कॉजेज जो होंगी यहाँ पे जेनेटिक कॉज में देर आर म्यूटेशन ओनली इन द सार्कोमेयर प्रोटीन यहाँ पे म्यूटेशन इन द साइट्रोस्केलेटल प्रोटीन sarcomere proteins as well as well as the nuclear envelope protein besides genetic causes non genetic causes like toxins the same risk as alcohol adriamycin radiation fibrosis infections pericarditis even childbirth this can also lead to dilated cardiomyopathy but isme keval genetic causes hoti hypertrophic mein theek hai and yahan pe hypertrophy hoga dilatation hoga heart ka fibrosis and थ्रोम्बाइस में नहीं बनेंगे इसमें 
in dilated cardiomyopathy we have discussed just now very good because of the stasis of the blood wonderful so because of the stasis of the blood intracardiac thrombi is seen okay isme kya hoga what happens here in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy hypertrophy is marked and asymmetrical septal hypertrophy myofibers disarray in the microscopy fibrosis interstitial replacement ek sath mein ek cheez aur important hogi there will be left ventricular outflow obstruction lekin clinical presentation all these condition both dcm and hcm this will lead to cardiac failure arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death clinical presentation dono ka more or less similar hota hai theek hai so again we have discussed uh, no the third variety is restricted cardiomyopathy so we have discussed dilated cardiomyopathy we have discussed hypertrophic cardiomyopathy the third and the least common variety is restrictive cardiomyopathy again here there is dysfunction of diastole means the heart is not able to relax during diastole right ventricular wall is impaired ventricular filling are normal primary disease of compliance results as the impaired ventricular filling during the diastole so this is the main pathology there is impaired ventricular filling because the ventricular compliance are not proper okay so causes can be amyloidosis sarcoidosis hemochromatosis all these are the metabolic diseases deposition of these substance or loffler syndrome endocardial elastofibrosis post adhesion fibrosis anything which increases the fibrosis of the cardiac muscle this leads to restrictive means the heart is not able to relax during the diastole and this is due to the non compliance of heart okay so uh, i rest okay so causes can be idiopathic associated with radiation fibrosis amyloidosis sarcoidosis metastasis or deposition of certain metabolites that accumulate sorry there is no gap due to inborn errors of metabolism okay so there is diastole dysfunction now what happens here is the ventricles they are usually of normal size myocardium is firm it is not flabby jaise ki usme hota hai dcm mein hota hai and here there is enlargement of both side of atria by atria left atria and right right atria and left atria dono ka enlargement ho jata hai so there is by atrial enlargement okay in restrictive cardiomyopathy this is clear okay things are clear till now ab jaldi se fata fat just write down yeah just write down the chat box difference gross difference in the Dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and restrictive cardiomyopathy. What is the difference in gross? DCM, HCM, and RCM. पटा पट पटा पट देखो. Yes. What happens in HCM? Good, Shital. what happens in hcm fast come on fast form ventricle in rcm and by atrial uh, along with there is by atrial uh, very good a banal like configurations very good asymmetrical septal hypertrophy and in rcm there is form ventricle hypertrophy is also there and there is by atrial enlargement also okay like here enlargement of the atriums okay again this is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy asymmetrical enlargement of the heart left ventricular enlargement banana shaped cavity along with uh, septal thickening in dilated cardiomyopathy what happens there is enlargement of the heart enlarged flabby theek hai and in restrictive cardiomyopathy the, there is 
the heart is not restrictive and there is enlargement of the both atrium okay so this is the difference gross difference between all three types of cardiomyopathies okay clear now the last topic is cardiovascular lesions in syphilis okay so very briefly we'll discuss uh, very briefly about syphilis we will, we will focus mainly on the cardiovascular lesions of syphilis so syphilis is caused by treponema pallidum and it is transmitted by sexual route maternal fetal transmission and rarely by other means and it has varied clinical and pathological manifestation okay so the organism here is treponema pallidum and it is usually not demonstrated by the gram stain because it is very thin very slender or organism and it is usually cannot be demonstrated by gram stain and it is demonstrated by certain special stains like one is the silver stain immunofluorescence technique and also by the dark field microscopy so that's how we demonstrate treponema pallidum this is the silver stain these are, can you see the black color organism these are spirochetes treponema pallidum and this is a section from the placental syphilis so here we can here we have demonstrated the organism by a special stain that is silver stain okay so now coming to the pathogenesis how this organism causes the disease so very important here is if you remember this one word that is proliferative end arteritis leading to ischemia so what ha happens here is in syphilis there is proliferative end arteritis and arteries are the terminal arteries that supply an organ so what happens there is in proliferation of these end arteritis and this leads to progressive narrowing of the lumens of the end arteries so kya hoga and arteries narrow keep walls ka proliferation hoga gradual proliferation se kya hoga what will happen there will be thinning or narrowing of the lumen and this narrowing of the lumen will lead to ischemia ischemic changes and this this is this is ischemia is responsible for the syphilitic lesions okay so this is the basic pathogenesis proliferative and arteritis leading to ischemia this will lead to all the signs and symptoms and all the lesions of syphilis this is responsible for all types of lesions of syphilis and according to presentation syphilis is divided into three stages one is the primary stage secondary stage and tertiary phase and between there is latent phase so cardiovascular syphilis is a manifestation of the secondary syphilis not the primary or the tertiary it is a manifestation of a secondary syphilis and in heart mainly it causes aneurysm and aortic regurgitation and the special lesions of syphilis are called as gamma which we'll discuss in the next slide and syphilis can also present in congenital form that in that it is called as congenital syphilis this will not discuss in this lecture syphilis may you will have another lecture so uh, uh, now coming to the cardiovascular cvs lesions of syphilis what happens in heart they can be gamma gamma is nothing but a special lesion of syphilis which is localized localized jaise tuberculosis mein tuberculoma or cases necrosis or granuloma is a chief lesion in tuberculosis so syphilis mein kya hota hai gamma is the main lesion of syphilis or they can be diffuse syphilitic myocarditis or they can be diffuse syphilitic pericarditis this is the gross appearance of syphilitic gamma okay. in blood vessels what can happen in blood vessels blood vessels mein they can be syphilitic arteritis uh the, it can it, it can involve the uh, tiny vessels so the vasa vesorum supplying the aorta and this will lead to aortitis okay so what will happen uh, we'll discuss the lesions of aorta in the next slide this one okay what will happen there there is involvement of the ascending aorta as well as the arch of aorta okay these are common sites of involvement and they, these are the aortic cusps these aortic cusps will be rolled up okay and they can be raised plaques within the aortic arch ascending aorta and aortic arch raised plaque like lesions wrinkling of the wrinkling can also happen which is transverse wrinkling this is the transverse wrinkling and coronary ostia will be narrowed down This is the ostia. You can see tiny ostia. There is narrowing of the coronary ostia, and adventitia will be thickened, and media will also be fibrotic and thickened. 
and all these lesions are due to proliferative endarthritis leading to ischemia usi ki wajah se sare lesions develop ho rahe hain theek hai to microscopy mein what we will see gamma what is the microscopy of a gamma we will see localized area of necrosis surrounded by the plasma cells and lymphocytes yahan pe plasma cells will be more as compared to lymphocytes diffuse inflammation mein kya hoga gamma will be localized lesion diffuse inflammation mein again we will see endarthritis these are the vessels proliferation of the vessels and they are surrounded by the chronic inflammatory cells mainly the lymphocytes and plasma cells and along with some necrosis okay and this typical appearance is called as this appearance of aorta is called as tree bark like appearance okay it it appears like the bark of the tree so this appears syphilitic aortitis ki jo gross word use hota hai that is called as the tree bark like appearance okay and what kind of complication of syphilitic aortitis as we have seen that there will be valvular incompetence okay aortic incompetence because yahan pe humne kya dekha tha to aortic valves se they were rolled up so this will lead to aortic incompetence stretching of the aortic ring and dilatation of the aorta okay and all will result in the left heart failure okay and because of the weakening of the wall yahan pe kya ho raha hai there is aortic valve will be thickened will be uh, thinned out and weakened because of the plaques mediastinal fibrotic thickening of the uh, ostia adventitia see in sab ki wajah se kya hoga the aortic valve will be weakened and this weakening of the aortic valve will lead to aortic aneurysm okay and similarly there will be narrowing of the coronary artery okay and this narrowing of the coronary artery will ultimately lead to angina mi and sudden death okay so these are the complications of syphilitic aortitis Okay, thank you all. Thank you very much. So we have come to the end of the lecture. Any query? shoulder plaques are the okay so uh, in uh, syphilitic art they can be syphilitic arthritis and syphilitic aortitis arthritis mein kya hoga there will be proliferation of the end arteries along with unki uh, arteries ki end arteries ki wall thickened ho jayengi they will be surrounded by the inflammatory cells and their narrow will be their lumens will be narrowed aortitis mein kya hoga the gross appearance typically it is called as the t tree bark appearance of the aorta isme kya hoga if we look at this picture first will be aortic cusp will be rolled up and thickened number 1 number 2 there can be dilatation of the aorta this dilatation will be due to also called as aortic aneurysm this ki uh, dilatation kyu hoga because of the weakening of the aortic valve aortic uh, aorta ki jo wall hogi weaken out ho jayegi theek hai and there will be raised plaques plaque like structure dikh rahi hai so raised plaque like structures honge raised plaque like structures and in between the plaque like structure there will be can you appreciate this it is shown by the arrow this is the transverse wrinkling of the inner side of the aorta theek hai iske alawa media or adventitia fibrotic ho jayegi thinned out ho jayegi and coronary ostia will be narrowed theek hai coronary ostia will be narrowed and in sab ki wajah se kya hoga this will lead to aortic incompetence aortic valve incompetence valve incompetence ho jayegi saath saath mein aortic aneurysm bhi ho jayegi okay and this will ultimately and this progressive ischemia may also lead to coronary artery disease and which can also lead to death so these are the lesions in cardiovascular lesions of syphilis okay clear so thank you very much